Hello BYU Cougar fans, welcome to the latest uh, daily podcast for Blue Cougar football of What's On My Mind. And uh, the first thing on my mind today is the scrimmage, of course. Yesterday BYU had its final scrimmage for fall camp, and uh, there were some nice big plays. A lot to, some, lot to get excited about, uh, even though, you know, big names like uh, Kyle Van Noy, Cody Hoffman, they weren't playing, but uh, Taysom Hill, he had some real nice plays, a long run, a really long pass, and uh, just, you know, help, helps pump you up, you know. That, that's the big thing. It, it uh, you know, it got my blood, blood uh, flowing a little more, got the juices going, and I'm really excited for this uh, season opener here in just a few more days. Um... But it was just a scrimmage. I mean, there's other than those big plays mentioned, there wasn't much more to get excited about. Um, Algy Brown, a running back buried on the depth chart, had a nice run. And uh, tight end Devin Mahina. I guess the tight ends, <laughs> tight ends heard me yesterday and kind of calling them out. And they're the ones that made the biggest pass plays. Only two passes went for longer than eight yards, and they were both caught by tight ends. Uh, Brett Thompson had the 55, 56 yard pass from Taysom Hill and uh, uh, Devin Mahina caught a 20 yard touchdown after he busted a couple tackles and so uh, that was kind of nice to see maybe kind of a slap in my face saying hey <laughs> I'm wrong I need to have some hope it's going to be a good year uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll gladly eat crow on that one. Um, other news, I uh, heard Bronco Mendenhall say that uh, Ethan Manumaleuna has been moved uh, to nose tackle, which kind of makes sense to me. Well, not kind of, it, it really makes sense to me. I've been saying it all along. Uh, many times I'm on record that uh, you know I thought uh, Manu should be the nose tackle, would be the nose tackle. He was playing there as a freshman. And, uh, you know, Broncos said it before, that's one of the three most important positions on the defense. And so it doesn't make sense to put in a new guy there, but put in this uh, fifth-year senior who's got experience already. We know we can depend on him and, uh, you know, have him anchor down that defensive line from the nose tackle spot. And that uh, slides up Remington Peck to defensive end. Uh... I've heard others that they were a little worried about his size, but uh, I am not. That's not just my uh, Bingham minor homer coming out. Uh, uh, if you read the defensive line preview, it, it points out, you know, there was another defensive lineman not too long ago at BYU about the same size as Remington Peck who had a pretty, pretty good career. Jan Jorgensen. Now, I'm not saying Peck will be as good as Jorgensen, but I liked what I saw from him early last year. And, you know, if Jorgensen can do it at that size, there's no reason why Peck can't. You know, if he's really, you know, got the, the talent and ability to do it. So, just because he's not as big as Kafusi, not as big as Ziggy Ansa was, or um, Manu, you know, there's... That doesn't mean he's still... Peck can't still be a good, solid defensive lineman for us. A couple other things on my mind uh, before I get to the big uh, hot button issue yesterday that there was a Brady Papinga interview that I'm sure you've probably heard about already. I'll weigh in on that, but quickly. Um, I looked at, uh, came across Kyle Van Noy's new uh, uh, picture on the BYU website definitely looks like he's bulked up also I saw the the commercial with him and Hoffman he's definitely bigger than Hoffman I know some people like have liked to debate whether or not Van Noy is really 235 he's really big enough to play linebacker in the NFL and I think he definitely passes the eyeball test in both of those he's bigger than our 6-4 215 or 220 pound a lot bigger than Hoffman 
and you just look at that picture you can tell he's he's put on some weight so whatever you thought about how big he was before he's bigger than that um found some interesting uh interesting stats about the passing game for BYU the the other times all three other times that they've played Virginia put that up as uh, this week's uh did you know in the trivia section so if you want to go there you'll find uh, find a link to that passing against Virginia or just on the the straight news uh news page you'll find that story there but pretty interesting uh, go take a look. I won't uh, spoil it for you. Now, the Brady Papinga interview. Uh, he, he wasn't on the the all-BYU show that uh, The Zone has. He was on uh, the big show, they call it, with uh, Gordon Monson and, I guess, Spence Checkets. And, you know, he, he really defended Bronco Mendenhall. Stood up for BYU in the program over uh, some criticisms that uh, they had about Bronco Mendenhall. Going back to uh, the Jersey fiasco with tradition, spirit, honor on the back. Uh, Monson tried to defend himself, saying that uh, you know he he was he put out his article bashing Bronco two or three days before Bronco admitted it was a mistake. And as I recall, the timeline on this whole thing went pretty fast. I mean, basically the same day that those jerseys debuted, he admitted it was a mistake. He met with the team and everything and you know came back and said it was a mistake. So I, I don't know where he gets this two to three days before. I know the media kind of like to, uh, the, the local Salt Lake media, they like to drag it out. They dragged it out for a couple more days. But as I recall, everything everything important that happened happened uh, all within the same day. Def definitely not within a two to three day span. And another thing that came up in that uh, interview, if you haven't heard it, I will uh, tweet out a link and post a link on the, the Facebook page, the Blue Cougar Football Facebook page, so you can uh, you can see you can listen to it yourself. Now I know a lot of I, I didn't I didn't think it was quite the slam dunk that a lot of people did as far as uh, Papinga totally uh, totally befuddling those guys but uh, I thought Papinga did very well uh, making his points and standing up for Bronco standing up for the program and uh, and uh, you know not letting them uh, them rip on you know this program that we love rip on BYU football now the, of course you know the topic of mixing religion and football came up that was the other big uh, thing they kind of argued about and uh, one one of the big points was uh, you know they they went all the way back to Broncos' introductory press conference, brought that up again about how he quoted from the Book of Mormon talking about the title of liberty and saying that uh, comparing the BYU football helmet to that. Um, and thinking that that was totally uh, a dumb thing to do, totally out of place, totally offensive to uh, all members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who are not BYU fans. And I, I don't know why you know, it, it bothers people so much like that. I mean, that's, that's what BYU is. You know, BYU's identity is it's a religious school, private school sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I don't see why people can't understand what's the big deal obviously Bronco Mendenhall is not saying you know the BYU football helmet or anything in the BYU football program or even the program itself is 
on the same level as the title of liberty. But he's trying to use, he was trying to use that as an example of something that, something that, <clears throat> excuse me, his, his players, the vast majority of his players, his audience, you know, BYU fans, boosters, that they could relate to. And for the BYU football program, he wanted something to take on that significance that the title of liberty did for those people in the Book of Mormon at that time. I don't know why it's so hard for people to, to understand that. I mean... And at that time, in BYU football history, that was the most appropriate thing for Mendenhall to do. It was very appropriate for him to do. It was what the program needed. And so, I don't think anybody should be going back eight years now and trying to still, you know, bring that up and... and uh, cause problems about it because the program was in disarray in every way and yes as as much as anybody might want to try to deny it there is a religious component to the football program and so so referencing religion was something that that was appropriate for men and hall to do at that time I mean, should it be it be like taking offense, you know, because somebody wants to compare something else to the U.S. Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, and you know, because maybe you know there weren't it, whoever's referencing it is doing it for a group that doesn't represent all Americans, or. Uh, Maybe it's somebody not even, who's not even American, who's who's in another country, but you know, wants to inspire the people and help them out, and use uses that as an example to inspire them to try and do something similar to what the Americans, what the colonists did back then. Is that something we should get offended as for as Americans, and think that person was out of place? No, it's 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 just really ridiculous, and uh, I'm proud that Pupinga stood up for it, and uh, and uh, I think we all should, as BYU fans, we shouldn't be ashamed of it. Well, all right, that's uh, what's on my mind today. I'll be back again tomorrow with a uh, little more. Stay, stay close to the site. We got, uh, besides the, the did you know, the trivia, a uh, couple other position previews coming out today. And uh, you, don't, you won't want to miss those. Thanks for listening. Go Cougars!